Hello everyone, and welcome to Paleo Facts, where we examine and discuss prehistoric life. This is the ninth episode of the series, so be sure to show your support by liking this video and subscribing to my channel for more episodes. Today, we will be going over the famous dinosaur known as Iguanodon bernesartensis. Our study of Iguanodon begins with some key players in the study of paleontology. It all began in 1822, where Mary Ann Mantell, wife of Gideon Mantell, discovered strange teeth within Tilgate Forest, a place in the area of Sussex, England. It is somewhat debated that Gideon Mantell actually found the teeth since he was dealing with other large fossilized bones. Nevertheless, in May of 1822, when the teeth were discovered, they were then presented to the Royal Society of London, a National Academy of Sciences, where they were met with scrutiny by theologian, paleontologist, and geologist William Buckland. A year later, in 1823, the teeth found by the Mantells were shown by Scottish geologist Charles Lyell to masterful anatomist and founding figure in paleontology Georges Cuvier, and he too dismissed them away like William Buckland. The next day, however, Cuvier retracted the statement in a sort of action of unsurety. In the next year, in 1824, when William Buckland would describe the first dinosaur, Megalosaurus, Mr. Buckland was then invited to a fossil collection, holding the teeth discovered by the mantels that he scrutinized. Like Cuvier, he changed his stance, stating that it was a saurian of some kind, like the animal he described, Megalosaurus, finally recognizing the importance of the teeth found in those woods. The masterful anatomist then concluded that the saurian seen by Buckland was possibly herbivorous and giant in size. Later on, word of Mantell's giant herbivorous saurian spread across the scientific community after Cuvier's interpretations, so William Mantell decided to work on identifying the teeth further. In that same year of September 1824, he visited the Royal College of Surgeons of England which was only founded 24 years ago at that point, to find comparable teeth to his fossilized ones in order to gain a better interpretation from what Cuvier provided him with in terms of description. Uh, however, he failed, although there was a saving grace in the form of Samuel the Stutchbury, which was a vital part of naming the teeth, since he saw them as oversized iguana teeth. The duo of Stutchbury and William Mantell as the teeth were finally named Iguanodon, referencing those teeth first found in the woods. The etymology, study of names of their origin of Iguanodon, is appropriately Iguana Tooth. The specific species in discussion for the Iguanodon genus concerning this paleofax is Iguanodon bernissartensis, which is very important in the history of discovery concerning this dinosaur and it only took 54 years from 1824 to 1874 to uncover this robust morph of the iconic dinosaur. Iguanodon bernissartensis classification it was first defined anatomically by zoologist George Albert Hulanger in 1881 and its species name refers to a rock formation in Bern Essart, Belgium, dubbed the Santa Barbara Claes Formation, which has a lot of skeletons of Iguanodon bernarsitensis preserved. These skeletons from Bernassard have pyrite preserved within them due to blue-green algae, cyanobacteria, reacting with the depositional clay environment to bear pyrite, also known as fool's gold, bearing a chemical composition of FeS2, ferrous disulfide. This location in Belgium dubbed the Cran of the Iguanodons is a clay pit far from what it was when Iguanodon was around. After 130 tons in weight of numerous rocks were excavated from the clay pit, they were extensively prepped by museum labs located in Brussels, the capital of Belgium. Furthermore, Iguanodon bernissartensis as a species, specifically the type species of the Iguanodon genus, thus defining the organism, is scientifically classified into the clade Ornithopoda and into the family Iguanodontidae. 
Iguanodon with them proposed cladograms going over evolutionary history within the ornithopods has mainly been placed in between Camptosaurus and Orianosaurus. This is a traditional grouping to represent the Guanodon's origins. However, there is also another analysis done in 2012 placing a Guanodon in between the Guanodon beryllium and right outside the superfamily, Hadrosauroidea. Iguanodon in appearance was robust, especially the Ibernisartensa species. This is a defining anatomical trait for that species when compared to other species of Iguanodon. Iguanodon bernisartensis was a bulky herbivore that could shift its locomotion from a quadrupedal stance to a bipedal stance. Over time, when Iguanodon got older, it would stick to a more quadrupedal stance in order to bear its weight. Furthermore, it was not capable of galloping slash running while it's on our fours, making it become a biped when need be on two legs. Studies have shown that Iguanodon's maximum speed while running as a biped would be about 24 kilometers per hour. That equates to 15 miles per hour at full speed. Moreover, Iguanodon was equipped with a toothless beak at the mouth, covered in keratin, and inside the mouth were tightly packed teeth. These teeth have been described to resemble individual large iguana teeth, as seen by its discovery under the eyes of Stutchbury and Mantle. Unlike later hadrosaurs, which had batteries of hundreds of teeth within their mouths, this shows a progression in dentition from the iguanodonts to the later derived hadrosaurids, built more over time to grind and swallow food items. The iguanodon most likely used the same process as other hadrosaurids, however, chewing and grinding plant matter, then proceeding to, to digest it. It is also believed that the iguanodon also had cheek-like structures within their mouths retaining food items. However, the Guanodon's diet is not exactly known. It is confirmed that it was capable of eating tough plant matter such as twigs and shoots, however it's been hypothesized that it would have eaten flowering plants, scientifically recognized as angiosperms, which would have been indeed around during the Cretaceous period. The arms of Iguanodon bernisartensis were long and robust, more so than any other Iguanodon species, at the end of which were the hands made up of three central digits that were largely inflexible due to the job of bearing weight when in a quadrupedal stance. On each hand, too, was a conical spike, whose exact function is still debated. Hypotheses suggest defense similar to a stiletto or knife against predators or for food foraging purposes. Furthermore, Iguanodon also had a single flexible digit on its hand, most likely used for a grasping function, manipulating plant hatter perhaps. Iguanodon's back also had ossified tendons, which aided in balance whilst alive. There's currently no evidence for sexual dimorphism, however, Iguan bernarsitensis exhibits a large variation across known individual specimens. This is observable in its limbs and spinal column slash cord. Guanodon bernisartensis has also been observed to have herded together, largely for migratory reasons. Iguanodon shared its environment with other dinosaurs in multiple formations. For example, in the Wessex Formation, Iguanodon lived amongst other Iguanodons, known as Mentilosaurus. The primitive Iguanodon Dryosaur Valdosaurus, the Nodosaur Polycanthus, the medium sized sauropod Ornithoposus, the Compsognathids Aristosuchus, and Calamosaurus, the Tyrannosauroid basal Tyrannosaur Eotyrannus, the Spinosaurids Baryonyx, Reparovenator, and Ceratosuchops, and finally the Carcharodontosaur Neovenator. This has been a Paleofax episode on Iguanodon bernarsitensis. Thanks for watching.